What's up guys, Sean here, and today is the Gunny Juice full review slash how-to video. I'm going to be reviewing this product, and I'm also going to be showing you how to use it and how to load up the straps like these, and how to actually strap and get a nice mirror polished edge. If you have a fresh piece of wood to use as a strap or fresh leather that doesn't have any compound on it already, this isn't gonna matter. But if you have already used it and you already dedicated it to a grit rating, um, this is gonna apply. After each use, you're going to want to clean this off. I use a wet paper towel and what you're doing is you're getting up the steel shavings from the blade that come off during the stropping process. And if you don't do this before you load fresh emulsions onto your strop, then you're gonna create new scratches that you don't want. And that's gonna keep you from getting the finish that you're looking for. So that's one thing to keep in mind, but I'm about to switch over to the tabletop view so you guys can take a closer look at exactly what I'm doing. All right guys, so we are back and it is time to show you how to load up these straps. We are gonna start off with our highest grit, which is gonna be the 12, and 12 micron is our highest grit. This is gonna be the perfect place to start after using something like this 1500 grit gold series diamond from KME. You don't necessarily need to start at 12, but it's going to help the progression, so you might as well. So, all we're going to do is take our lid off of this, and this is a little pump bottle. I don't believe you need to shake it, but I shake it anyway. And then what we're going to do is you slowly push this down because I found if you go to push this down quickly, it might shoot, you know, across the strap or off of the strap and then you're going to be wasting it. And this stuff is not exactly cheap. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to spread this out with my finger and we want to be careful not to cross this line because we don't want to mix this 12 micron emulsion with the 3 micron emulsion. All right, guys, we are back, and these straps have had plenty of time to dry, so I'm about to flip them over and do the other side.
All right, guys. So these are all dry now. After you finish applying the compound to one of these sides, you need to let it dry for at least 10 to 15 minutes. And that is going to keep all the emulsions from spreading around and becoming uneven. And it allows them to kind of lock into place, giving a nice even grit across the entire surface. So without any further ado, I'm going to show you exactly how to use this. And then we are going to discuss how it performed and what my overall take is on this product. So the knife that I'm going to be stropping is this Maximet Spyderco Para 3. So we need to take a look at this edge bevel first so we can see exactly what our starting point is. And as you can see here, this edge is very polished. However, if you look closely, you can still see a very fine scratch pattern. Now, this is the finish that you can achieve with a KME Gold Series Diamond 1500 grit stone at the end of your progression. And then if you move on to stropping, obviously you can get it much more polished. But I'm just trying to get the camera to focus in here so you guys can really see the scratch pattern. And then we will do the same thing after we make some progress. So our goal is to achieve a mirror polished edge. And although this edge is very shiny and reflective, this is not considered a mirror edge. This would be considered a semi polished finish and this is still very sharp but the main difference is the very fine scratch pattern that you can still see right now so we're going to see if we can get rid of that we are going to start off with our highest grit which is 12 micron and what you're going to do i like to hold this in my hand like so and then i place the edge down onto the strop okay Get a nice comfortable grip. I like putting my pointer finger out here. And then you're gonna tilt it back until you see that black shadow go away. And with very light pressure, you're gonna start sliding back. And then you hear that, how it's scratching. That means that you're not at the right angle. All right, see how that start, started to sound smoother? So, still sounds a little bit scratchy. Maybe that's because this is a high grit. So see, we're gonna tip it back, get rid of that shadow, then, it's not easy to do on camera. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start from the tip. Sometimes if I'm having trouble getting it started from the back and get my angle, I'll go to the tip and do the same thing, but start with just the tip on the surface. So you see how that sounded a lot less scratchy? So you'll know when you're at the right angle if it feels kind of like it's suctioning to the surface and it'll feel smoother than if you're at the wrong angle. So wrong angle, you're going to hear a lot of scratchiness. If you're at the right angle, 
Oh, let's see. I'm looking through a camera so I can't exactly see. Hopefully you guys can hear the difference. As I come towards the tip, I'm gonna tip my hand up a little bit. So keep your angle. And I'm just tipping my hand up and that See what that does? That maintains your angle. See what that does? Just tipping your hand up a little bit. That maintains your angle, but it allows you to get all the way to the tip. So, coming back, and as I'm coming back, I'm going to let my hand rock forward a little bit. And that allows me to get to the tip. So same thing. So my wrist is kind of, my wrist really isn't moving. I'm kind of just lifting my elbow and that is in turn lifting the blade like this. So it's it's kind of ex hard to explain in words, but hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here and this is not exactly a natural feeling motion. So this is something that definitely is gonna take some getting used to, and you have to develop muscle memory. So this will get a lot easier as you go. And it's also gonna be different for different um, blade shapes. So it's not always gonna be as difficult as it is when you first start. Then when you do the start at the tip, you just get the tip lined up and you're really, you're focusing right here at the edge and you're just following that edge. You want to make sure that your, the apex of the knife is making contact with the surface of the strap along this edge. So if you go back and look, when I was loading the strap, I really emphasized making sure that I got plenty of emulsion on these side parts right here.
All right, so we did plenty of passes on the 12 micron. Let's see if we can see any difference here. Okay, so it looks like we did refine those scratches a good little bit. And if you, you can see now, the finish is definitely more even across the entire edge bevel. So that is good also. The more even your scratch pattern is, the better finish you'll be able to achieve in the end. So let's move on to our next grip, which is gonna be nine micron. Here is our nine micron, and we have a nice full piece to work with, so this will be a little bit easier to demonstrate. All right, so same thing. Pulling back, pulling back, and I'm letting that edge, I'm making sure that it stays making contact right in this area. So see the apex at the tip making contact here. All right, so start bringing it back, and I'm letting my elbow drop down a little bit as I'm going down. And that is going to let that apex stay or your whole bevel basically is going to be flat down to the strap and that is going to help refine your edge. This is a really fucked up angle I'm trying to do this at. this so you can see my hand And sometimes it's also easier if you bring the strap to the edge. So I can kind of keep the knife still, right? And just push the strap in towards the knife or towards the spine of the knife. And that's gonna help me focus on maintaining my angle instead of focusing on trying to slide the knife across the strap. Then over time, as you get comfortable with it, you kind of, 
I find myself doing both at the same time. So I'm, I'm basically going at it for, with both hands. I'm maneuvering this and this to keep it where I want it. See how I'm pulling the strap or pushing the strap. Okay, so I think that is going to be it for the 9 micron. Take another look. Very even looking. and it is definitely refining that pattern and remember this 12 micron and 9 micron these are very high grits you start really seeing the mirror at 6 and 3 micron which we are about to do Oh man, this thing is sharp. You see that tip and the edge was grabbing my skin right there? This thing is getting fucking nasty sharp. This was already insanely sharp, to be clear. This was fresh off the stones, so it doesn't get much sharper than that. But if you have the right stuff, like these diamond emulsions and some basswood you can take it to a whole nother level there we go you can see that polish is starting to develop or that mirror is starting to develop and you don't even really get into much of a mirror until six micron See, now it's becoming a mirror. You can actually see things in the background mirror reflecting off of the edge. However, you can still see a very fine scratch pattern. But clearly, it is becoming very refined. Now, if you look at the heel, there's a little bit of some rougher or bigger scratches at the heel. And that's pretty normal. The heel is going to be your most difficult spot because 
that is the area that gets kind of gets the least attention when you're sharpening also because if you take it back all the way then you're going to risk grinding your stone into your um i guess blade tang or whatever and marking it up where, right where your plunge is so and the lighting in here for some reason it's giving me a very difficult time getting this to focus in but hopefully you guys can tell just from what we've already shown that this is definitely improving So there you can see my banner on the wall it reflecting off of the edge bevel. So cameras have a very difficult time focusing in on reflective surfaces. I'm trying to show you this the best I can so you can get as accurate of an idea of what difference each of these grip ratings is making. But the camera is only going to be able to pick it up so good. But I can tell you from looking at this in person, this is the beginning of a legitimate mirror finish, okay? This is not a extremely high polished, super perfect mirror finish, but this would be considered a mirror. So let's move on to the six micron and see what we can do from there. All right, guys, so moving on to our six micron. Okay, this is where we are currently at from the nine micron. Let's see what we can do with this.
Take a look at it. Wow. You can definitely see that it is getting a lot better right now. Oh, come on, you fucking piece of shit. Look how reflective that is. Let's see. Can we see me? Oh, there's my phone stand. More focus. See my microphone. Now that is fucking reflective. There we go. Let's go for my banner. There it is. All right, you guys, so that is what 6 micron looks like. Now let's take this thing to 3 micron.
All right, guys, so if you've made it this far, it is quite apparent that you are one of my true supporters and a very, very appreciated member of this community, and you are very appreciated by me. Without any further ado, let's move on to the fucking one micron. About damn time, right? I know, I know. Actually, no. I lied. It's time for three micron. Sorry, guys. Got a couple more to go. I'm going to try to make it quick. So, no more talking. I'm just going to be stropping. Are you guys seeing how much of an improvement it makes each micron rating that we go down? Guys, that's a pretty damn good mirror right there. But there's still plenty of room for improvement and we're going to go there. We're going to take it there. That's right. So, so we don't make this any fucking longer. Let's get to the next one, which is one micron. Let's go. Boom, bitches. This one feels real good. The lower you go in Micron and the more refined your edge bevel gets, the smoother it feels. And you really want to pay attention to the feedback that you get from the strop. And feedback just means I can feel a certain amount of vibration, if you want to call it that, in the strop as I drag the knife across it in my auxiliary hand. And then in my hand that's holding the knife, you can feel the difference when you are taking it across the strop. If if you're at the right angle, like I said before, it feels like it is suction cupping down to the strop. And if you're at the wrong angle, it'll either feel like it's scratching or, um, oh, what other way can I put it? it it'll just feel like you're dragging it across a rougher surface. Now, when you are at the right angle and you start getting the feel for it, um, you'll notice that 
it makes a lot quieter of a sound. Listen. Oh, my finger was rubbing. See how you can barely hear anything? So that's one of the nice things about the basswood is that it gives you really good feedback. And it's not like leather where it has give to it, where you can be, you know, close to right or, you know, just a little bit off. With this, it's perfectly flat and it's a hard surface. So you're either at the right angle or you're not. And the strop will let you know that by the sound and the feel when you are making passes. A lot of times when you see me stop and then start again, it's because I feel that the angle is off and that something needs to be adjusted. So I stop immediately instead of continuing through at the wrong angle, because if you do make a full pass, at an angle too steep, then you could be dulling your knife. And if you go make a full pass at an angle that is too shallow or too low, then what's going to happen is you'll start polishing above the edge bevel. And as that's not the end of the world, but it just looks nicer if you uh, keep it at the right angle.
off just not. So, all right, let's see. <laughs> Damn, guys. I, I just got to say, I'm pretty fucking impressed. I don't know if I'm more impressed with me or with the product. I mean, I guess it's a little bit of both because stropping takes tons of practice to get it down to where you are really good at it. And it also takes a lot to create a product that's this good and effective. I'm sure it took Scott Gunn a lot of time researching and testing these products before they were before he was able to bring them to market so um kudos to him he is a champion when it comes to the sharpening world in my opinion and his products speak for themselves let's see um Let's make sure this thing is still sharp also. All right guys, well, let's make sure this thing is still sharp. Grab a piece of uh, paper. Uh, this magazine. Let's see. Just for you guys that are going to say, try to say that I fucking using a different knife or some shit. Out of all the times this fucking thing doesn't want to focus, of course it's right now. It's just one of the fun things about making videos, guys. One of the really fucking fun things. But, anyways, if you don't believe me, I don't give a fuck. I ain't stressing over it. You, I literally... This video is 50 minutes long already because... I wanted you guys to see the entire process and know that I'm not bullshitting you. Look how easy this bites in.
All right, that's enough of a mess now. So, I would say it's still fucking sharp. Now the only thing we have left to do is the 0.5 micron and the 0.25, or no, yeah, shit, we have three, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, and 0 0.1, so we better get a fucking move on, let's get to it. Alright guys, so I think it might do better at this angle, I changed the angle of my phone, so hopefully it has less distortion and focuses in better you guys see that all right so this is the one micron Alrighty guys, let's check this fucking thing out. So we just finished up with the 5 micron. Or no, not 5 micron. 0.5 micron. And let's check her out. Same deal. We are going to... Clean the blade with some alcohol. And I'm also going to clean my fingers off. Because I have a bunch of emulsion on my fingertips. from touching the straps and the fact that they have emulsion on both sides. All right, so moment of truth. Actually, I need to hit my fucking vape. <laughs> All righty. Well, damn, would you look at that? Guys, all right, at this point, is there really any denying how effective this stuff is? Yeah, you got to put some elbow grease into it, but this is the only way, well, one of the only ways to get a true mirror polish and still maintain a insanely sharp, aggressive, edge that still has a lot of bite because a lot of times by the time you're done polishing your edge you've done lost the majority of the bite and all the aggression but if you do it this way using basswood which is very hard and gunny juice which is polycrystalline diamond emulsion then this is what you end up with. A very, very sharp knife with a very, very nice mirror polished edge. I think I've already mentioned this, but cameras have a really difficult time picking up reflective surfaces, especially when there is multiple reflective surfaces. For example, this blade, I should have used a knife with a DLC coating or a heavy stone washed blade instead of a blade that is shiny because then it would have been a lot easier for the camera to focus in on the edge. For example, I'll show you this one right here. 
I took this one down to three micron, but I've used it since. But see how much easier the camera can focus in on that because it's not trying to pick up two separate reflective surfaces. So it's not that the fucking edge is not perfect and insanely fucking beautiful. It's just cameras have a really hard time picking it up. So, like I said, this one only went down to 3 micron, okay? The knife that we are doing now, the Maximet Pair 3, we are at 0.5 micron, which is two levels finer. Because we went with the 1 micron after 3, and then 0.5. So, just want to give you guys a little bit of an idea, just in case it's not picking up on the Maximet, this is really, really effective. So, try this one more time. Alright guys, now we're going to go on to the last two and see what the final fucking product is. So for the last two, we have 0.25 micron and 0.1 micron. And I'm not going to stop in between these because this video is fucking astronomically long. Oh, that feel good.
All right, guys. Is it sharp? Now one thing that I really wish I had is a BES BES tester because then I could actually measure how sharp the edge is and we could have seen if this edge got sharper in fact by using this gunny juice. But unfortunately they are pretty expensive and I don't have any extra cash right now but if anyone has a BES tester sitting around and they wanted to send it to me to be able to test some knives, that would be really amazing. Alright guys, I think it's sharp. So what is my final conclusion? Well, I think you guys can see right here that this edge now has a very beautiful mirror polish and I'm sure if you stuck through this whole video then you have also seen that this gunny juice is extremely effective it works very well and yes it does take a little bit of time and effort but you can get a very beautiful mirror polished edge and keep that edge insanely sharp at the same time so This product definitely has my recommendation. I've heard nothing but good things about it from everybody I know who has tried it. And it's something that I will continue to use into the future. So, hope you guys enjoyed this one. It took me a lot of fucking work and time and effort. Uh, I've been working on this for 14 hours now, so I'm glad to be finishing it up and get it posted up for you guys. So, as always guys, thank you for watching, stay tuned, and I will see you in the next one.